So now what we're going to do, if our workbook has met all the criteria, meaning that it's not the workbook where the macro is in, also the first sheet has the words month and total sales, that's when we're then going to actually do the work that's going to copy the data and paste it into this workbook. So first we have to figure out what's the next available row that's available to us. So cur row is going to be a variable. So this is just a placeholder for storing a bit of information. So I'm going to say cur row data.range a1 dot current region dot rows dot count plus one. So what this does for me, this counts how many rows are currently in the current region. So of that block of contiguous cells tells me how many rows there are and then adds one to it because I want to take my data and paste it onto the next available row. To copy the data from the other workbook, that's where we'll say wb.sheets1, so we're grabbing data from the first sheet in the workbook regardless of its name, dot range a1, dot current region, dot offset1, dot copy. The reason for the offset, I don't want to copy the headings. So when I'm stacking that data together from the other workbook, I don't want to grab the headings from that workbook, I just want the data. So that's why we'll start at range A1 and we'll shift down a row so that we grab just the data itself. Then to paste it into a specific place in our combined workbook here, we'll say data.cells cur row A. So notice I can reference a cell by saying range A1, or I can also use the word cells. And so the word cells lets me break up the range name and the column. So when I'm using the cells object, I put the row number first, and the row number in this case is dynamic. It's going to be fluctuating as I copy and paste more and more data. That's why I'm referencing cur row there, but I do want to paste it in column A. So whatever the next available row is, and then I do a dot paste special. So we'll indent some more here, and we'll say determines next available row. And so cur row equals data at range A1, current region. So notice as we're typing, Visual Basic does have an autofill feature. So as you start typing, it starts matching in on likely objects. You can pull down the arrow key, you can press the tab key without having to type that whole word. So there is a autocomplete aspect here. So we'll say, now there's a distinction here as well. Notice there's a row and then there's rows. Typically, most often you're going to want the plural because I don't want the row of the current region. I want to know the rows. So make sure that we get the plural there. And then dot count tells Excel that we want to count how many rows there are in that region. And we want to add one to that because we want to put our data on the next available row. We press enter using the tab key to indent copies data from worksheet and then we'll say wb.sheets1 dot range a1 dot current region because I want all the contiguous cells dot offset one dot copy We just add another comment there as needed. Offset ensures that we don't copy the headings. Copy this down there. We then need to paste the data. So where do we want to paste it? We want to paste it on our data worksheet. We want to paste it on whatever the next available row is. So that's why we'll say cells per row. Put in A dot paste special. Now another good thing to do, it's not on the slide here, but I'll just go ahead and put it on the screen there, is to say clear the clipboard. And the way we do that is we say application cut copy mode equals false. This is a little bit tricky because when we say application dot cut copy mode, Excel offers to put it to either copy mode or cut mode. We want to clear it. 
So that's why I put the word false. And so false is not a choice that will come up with the autocorrect, but you put it in there. And so that clears the clipboard because otherwise what happens, you run your macro, you go to close the file. Excel will say, oh, there's some stuff on the clipboard. Do you want to save it? And so that can be confusing and it's just another prompt to deal with. So once we've pasted, if we just clear the clipboard, then we don't have to worry about that there.